Denim Couch Podcast. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. The 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s with Steph with an F. Hi, guys. Welcome to the Denim Couch Podcast, where we chill on this denim couch and talk about the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm Stephanie Tanner. Welcome. Hey guys, it's Stephanie Tanner with the Denim Couch Podcast, and welcome to the 70s recap. I can't believe we're already here. That world by, it was probably because the last couple of months have been interesting, (laughs) to say the least. It's actually interesting because I started my first 70s interview with Peggy just as we were starting to talk about the coronavirus situation and what might happen with it. And I think we were expecting things to be closing down very soon when I interviewed Peggy. And that was episode 21. So that was just the beginning of the 70s. And it was great for me because I was able to connect with these people during the time where not much physical connection has been made. And in my last recap, I talked about how social media was by far my biggest focus of this podcast and the differences in technology and how social media affect our lives today versus not having that back in the 60s. Life was much more simple and I have tried to strongly push this message that social media consumption can make our lives more difficult and controlling that will actually help us live more peaceful and simpler lives where we focus on activity with family and creating your own fun and really creating experiences that you will remember for the rest of your life. Really connecting with people and making deep connections that are far more meaningful than time spent wasted on on social media. And so it was interesting because my perspective had to shift during this this change where our lifestyles have completely changed and we are not able to have human interaction much. I found it really funny that I was now relying on social media to make those connections with people and make sure relationships were still being strengthened and people were being reached out to. And it was funny because life actually became more simple and it wasn't because I was controlling my social media interaction. It was because of the coronavirus pandemic that forced life to be made more simple. Uh, Yes, more scary and a wide variety of other things, but it forced our lives to become more simple in a way. And I just had a good laugh at that. I don't want to bash technology because it has saved us at this time where we don't have human connection and we've had to be separated from the people that we love in some cases. And we relied on that technology to keep us together and to let those people know that we love them and and that we care for them and show that we care for them. And that had to be through technology and social media. So overall, I just find it interesting that in life, it is important that we occasionally step back and slow down and think of the people and relationships that matter, whether that's by lessening our time on social media or making the time to reach out and to gather together and make memories through awesome activities. And cool thing about these interviews is I get tons of ideas for activities based on what people used to do. And that's one of my favorite things in doing these interviews. And so with that, the last couple months have been a time for reflection and a time for reaching out to people. I would love to recap this for you. If you haven't listened to some of these interviews, I'll keep it short, but hopefully you'll get a good idea of what interviews you would like to listen to if you haven't. Many of you might be here because I made an announcement recently this week that I am having another child. (laughs) And you may want to find out what gender that child is. And I will get to that. 
I will keep this recap short and I will get to an embarrassing story from this week and also on whether we are adding a boy or girl to our family. I have known for the last who knows how many months and quarantine has made that a really easy secret to keep and it's been fun just keeping it within my family and experiencing this whole pregnancy within my family and now I'm ready to share it with you guys. So here is the 70s recap. My first guest was Peggy McFarlane and her episode is 21. One thing that I loved aside from her description of them eating Slurpees with soft ice cream on top. Oh, doesn't that just sound like heaven. Every time I read this or hear about this, I just need to run to 7-Eleven and make this happen. But aside from that, I loved our discussion on women's social media pressures. And we talked a lot about pregnancy when, lo and behold, I was pregnant. And I thought it was really interesting that back then no one cared and there was no pressure to look any certain way. Um, you maybe saw a few magazines, but I doubt they were highlighting maternity clothes. And there was no pressure to look a certain way while pregnant. And nowadays there is. <laughs> there is that pressure. And it's from social media. And it's just because we see all these ideal women, which are lovely and should be celebrated. But at the same time, we should not feel pressure to look any certain way. You should be as comfortable as you want to feel <laughs> And I just loved talking about that with her because it would be so interesting to live in a time where that didn't feel like a pressure. And it makes me think of my mother who wore this adorably funny, thick striped matching shirt and top while she was pregnant. She actually made it for herself and it was really cute on her. It would not fly in today's culture, but it was really cute, and I, I wanted to replicate that and make one, so we'll see if I can get to that. I haven't found the pattern for it. I just might do that. And then episode number 22 was with Jolene, and I loved that she had to say that school was her happy place. She had lots of friends at school. School was just a wonderful place for her to be, and she enjoyed it, and that is refreshing to hear. I feel like school is, a, is an awesome place. It's where kids gather, and they get to be friends and enjoy life at that age, and right now, I think a lot of kids are missing school, and we all just appreciate school more, and, and I just liked that while interviewing Jolene, I got to learn more about her kids, and not all of that was in the interview, but it's so fun to get to know a good friend even better. So I enjoyed this. I love that she wanted to be a sheep herder when she grew up. And it's really cool to see how her love for school actually translated into her job nowadays. So she is a teacher and an amazing one and so good with kids. Okay. And Kevin, I interviewed Kevin in episode 23 and he had a lot of different, he had a variety of great stories. So I love his spunky personality. He talked about all the pranks that they did, um, streaking down the street, firecrackers in mailboxes, and just told really entertaining stories. And then he talked about fighting over the phone because you had usually only one phone in the house and it was connected to a cord and the kids would fight over it who would get to talk to their friends. They'd fight over that. And I thought that was really funny because no one experiences that today except for me with my two-year-old kid who is not allowed to play with phones. So he does fight me for mine. He talked a lot about similarities between Ebola and the Vietnam War and shootings that happened back then and compared them to a lot of the events that happen today. And that was really interesting. And then Carol in episode 24, she is just this sweet, sweet person who has just an incredible sense of humor. She can make me laugh like no other, which is funny because she claims that she's a wallflower and has always been a wallflower. And her stories do describe her as a wallflower. But yet when she's talking, her sense of humor is incredible. I loved her stories about foster care and their family took in a lot of children and I just think this is one of the best things people can do. And I really look up to, to those who have done it and tell me about their experience with foster care and helping out these children. 
Stacy in episode 25, his interview is probably one of the most thrilling and exciting interviews that I've ever done. I think he entertained me the most anyone ever has. And maybe it's just because I love his stories. I think his childhood is magical. They did midnight football with the neighborhood kids. He talks about water skiing in the canal while being pulled by a car. Um, He hunted pheasants after school almost every day. And his whole childhood was just adventurous. Um, He had a bunch of brothers and they... They built this 40-foot, three-story treehouse, and all the neighborhood kids would come over, and it was just an adventure all day long, and I love this interview so much. In episode 26, I interviewed Penny, and one of my favorite things that she described was her friends and her cooking in the kitchen while listening to music. They said they did this a lot. And she described and listed off a bunch of the music from the 70s that most of us will recognize today. And then just how wonderful and long-lived the 70s music is. It, it stuck around for a long time, and most of those songs are very popular today. And um, Penny, Penny has a talent for music. But I have to say, I think the best part of this interview was her talking about how her and her boyfriend would wear their green plaid matching bell bottoms around together. So they would plan out when they were going to wear their green plaid bell bottoms. <laughs> I mean, that if that is not hilarious, I don't know what is. <laughs> I interviewed Jake in episode 27, and he is my one of my great teachers from high school. And his interview was full of his life of sports and literature. And I loved this because what I took away from this is that most people learn from their early experiences and, and things that we experience early on in life really just shape who we are and what we want to be for the rest of our life and took the things that he loved and the things that he didn't like and made his life what it is today. And I think most of us do that. Cheryl's interview was episode 28 and Cheryl was a busy bee. This doesn't surprise me. Uh, I know her very well. And she, growing up, describes road shows and being in performance groups. She was on the drill team. She did 4-H and so much more. And she talks about that. And one thing she said is that mediocre talents bring her joy. And how, how cool is that? I can relate to this a lot. I think it is amazing this this interview is incredible because she does go through a very thorough overview of important cultural events of that decade and and highlights basically anything and everything that happened within the 70s that was important in history. And then the last episode of the 70s, I am so happy that I interviewed Janice and George Ribeiro. Um, episode 29, they were they're just very entertaining as well. Their voices are, I could listen to them all day, and they had amazing stories. Janice described her childhood on the lake and the outdoor experiences growing up, and they spent a lot of time with families and and friends and family. And then I loved how they talked about teaching by example and caring for the earth, and, and they're very passionate about this, and they talked about leaving a place cleaner and better than you found it. And I loved this. I haven't gotten advice like that in a long time. And I thought this was important for me to hear. And I just think it's a great message. They also have quite the story. And George talks about his perspective from as an anti-war advocate. And this was so interesting. Totally worth it to listen to. We talk about how there's multiple sides to any story, really. I love this couple because they truly focus on the best in people and have always shown, have always been so welcoming to everyone they meet. So that's my 70s recap. Along with that, I learned a little more about the results of drug use from this time period. I heard from multiple people about the effects war had on them and their parents from the 60s and the Vietnam War. We talked about pandemics. Um, the Ebola pandemic, shootings, and then fashion was 
very entertaining <laughs> during this time period. And so, if anything, that was very interesting to listen to. I loved the 70s. This was such a fun experience for me. I hope you guys all enjoyed most of these interviews. And yeah, I, I think that's it for this recap. So we will dive right into the embarrassing story and the gender reveal for, for the end of this episode. My embarrassing story is that this week I slid down the stairs on my butt. That's really all there is to it. It was really funny. And a little scary because uh, as a pregnant person or just any person <laughs> at all, you're not supposed to fall down the stairs. And I slid very smoothly down the stairs. It was hilarious. I think I'm fine. Hopefully I'm fine. <laughs> and then for those who came for the gender reveal, we found out about three or four weeks ago that we are having another boy. <laughs> so... Baby number two is going to be a boy, and I'm really excited about this. I saw so I'll spend the 80s, these interviews, the last of the 80s interviews, being very pregnant and enjoying <laughs> stories about the 80s while very swollen and pregnant. This has been such a fun experience for me. It's what I've wanted to spend my time doing, and all of these stories and experiences have definitely affected and helped me out at this time and may or may not have encouraged me to want more children. <laughs> so you have really shown me the importance of family and the importance of people in your life, the importance of family and kids in your life. And, and so here we are with that. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'll be back next week with an 80s episode. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. And guys, we're, we're at the 80s. We are there. This is the last of the Denim Couch podcast. We have 10 more episodes left. I can't believe it. It's been so fun. The 80s are here. Talk to you next week. Bye. If you came here for mental health help, um, please go visit your doctor. If you're looking for um, some mental health tips, Dr. Daniel A. Men is someone I follow. I love what he has to say and offer. Um, I think his website is uh, brainhealthassessment.com, and he just has uh, some of the some awesome checklist items that go over brain health or, um, habits habits that you should be doing to have better brain health. Um, I, don't know, I want to say there's like five to 10 items. And if you have those, if you're working on those habits and trying to improve them to improve your brain health, you'll also improve your happiness level because brain health equals mental health. So keep your brains happy and healthy and check out Dr. Daniel Amen. This is not sponsored. I just really like what he has to say, and I think it's really beneficial. I think it can help a lot of people. Um, it's actually very matter-of-fact, um, kind of obvious, but yet yeah, we neglect so many of these habits daily, and I do feel like, um, you know, if you're feeling unhappy, that may be one of the reasons you're unhappy, because you're ne neglecting your brain health um, which is also your men mental health and and yeah trying to improve these habits could really help so check him out uh, if you have any stories from the 40s 50s 60s 70s and 80s please get in contact with me let's chat I want nothing more than to chat about the past I want nothing more than to chat about the 40s 50s 60s 70s and 80s if you have any specific questions that I'm not asking that you would like to know about these eras while interviewing these people, please let me know. I would love some advice and I would love your input. So what would you guys like to know?